Hello. Today we will be folding an origami jack-o'-lantern designed by Jun Meikawa. This model is not very difficult to fold and is perfect for Halloween. This model requires one square sheet of paper with color on one side and white on the other. The color that you have facing up will be the color of your completed pumpkin, so you want to keep that in mind. And we're going to start by folding in half diagonally. So take this bottom right corner and fold it up to the top left corner. Align the corners on the edges, then make your crease, and then you can unfold. And once you have this, then you're going to fold in half diagonally in the opposite direction. So take the bottom left corner and fold it up to the top right corner. Again, align the corners and the edges, then make your crease, and then unfold. Now we're going to fold all four corners into a line with the center point here where those two creases we just made intersect. So let's start with this bottom right corner and we're just going to pull it up like this and align it with the intersection. And once it's aligned, then you can make your crease. And once you have that, then you want to do the same thing with this bottom left corner. So you're just going to pull it up, align it with the intersection, and then make your crease. Then we're going to do the same thing again on this top left corner. So just pull it down and align it with that intersection. Then make your crease. And then we're going to do the same thing one last time on this top right corner. So we're just going to pull it down. Again, align it with the intersection. And then make your crease. And once you've done that to all four corners, then you can unfold. Now we're going to fold all four corners into a line with these four creases we just made. So we're going to start by rotating the paper, and then we're first going to work on this bottom corner here. So basically all you want to do is fold this bottom corner up and align it with this intersection here. So we're going to start by pulling it up like this, and once the corners align with the intersection and the vertical creases are aligned, then you can make your crease. And now your model should look like this. Then you want to rotate the paper and do the same exact thing on this bottom corner here. So again, you're simply going to fold this bottom corner up and align it with this intersection here. So just pull it up like this, align the corner with the intersection, then make sure the vertical creases align, and then you can make your crease. So once you fold it in two corners, then your model should look like this. Then you want to rotate the paper and do the same exact thing once again on this bottom corner here. So again, we're simply going to fold this bottom corner up and align it with this intersection. So just pull it up like this, align the corner with the intersection, Make sure the vertical creases align, and then make your crease. So once you've folded in three of the four corners, then you're going to rotate the paper one last time and do the same exact thing on this bottom corner here. So again, you're simply going to fold this bottom corner up and align it with this intersection here. So fold the corner up, and once it's aligned with the intersection and the vertical creases align, then you can make your crease. So once you've folded in all four corners, then your model should look like this. Then what you want to do is simply unfold this bottom corner here. So just pull down this flap and flatten it out, and then you want to turn the model over. Now we're going to fold these three edges into a line with these three creases that I've marked here. So we're going to start with this right edge, and we're simply going to align the edge with this right vertical crease here. So we're going to start by pulling the right edge over, and you'll see that there's a trap layer underneath. You just want to let the trap layer out, and then align the edge with the crease. So once they're both aligned, then you can make your crease. Then you should have this, and then you want to do the same thing on the top. So you're going to align the top edge here with this top horizontal crease. So just pull down the top edge, again let that trap layer out from underneath, then align the edge with the crease, and then make your crease. Your model should look like this, then we're going to do the same thing one last time on the left. So we're going to take this left edge and align it with this left vertical crease. So just pull the left edge over, let the trap layer out from underneath, then align the edge with the crease, and then make your crease. And once you fold it in all three corners, then your model should look like this. Now we're going to fold up this bottom corner and align it with the top corner here. So just start by pulling up the bottom corner, and once the top and bottom corners are aligned, then you can make your crease. So align both corners, just like this, then make your crease nice and sharp all the way across. And once you've done that, then your model should look like this. Now we're going to be focusing on the top portion of the model here. 
So we're going to start by folding down this top corner and aligning it with this intersection here. So we're just going to pull the top corner down. You want to make sure that you have both layers and you're going to pull it down and align it with that intersection. Then once it's aligned and you've made sure that the vertical creases are also aligned, then you can make your crease. Your model should look like this. Then what you want to do is align this top edge here with this horizontal crease on the top as well. So you're just going to pull it down once again. Again, make sure you have both layers. Then you're going to align the edge with the crease and then make a crease. And once you have this, then you can unfold the top portion of the model so it goes back to what you originally had. Now we're going to pleat the top section of the model here. And we're going to do that by using the creases we just created. So as you'll see, we created one, two, three, four new creases. And we're going to start by folding down along this third crease here, or the second crease from the bottom. So we're going to create a valley fold by simply folding down along that third crease, just like this. And this time you want to make sure that you're only folding down one layer. So once you folded it down like this, then we're going to fold it back up along the second crease here. And we're going to do that by creating a mountain fold. So just fold it up like this. Then we're going to fold it back down along this last crease here by creating a valley fold. So just fold it down like that. And then your model should look like this. Now we're going to create a mountain fold along this horizontal crease here. And we're going to do that by picking up this layer. And we're simply going to pinch the crease from the top. So just pinch it like this. And then you can flatten out the model once again. But as you'll notice, that pleated region of the model is now hidden underneath this layer. So in order to get it back out, what we're going to do is pull this edge down so that we can see the pleated section once again. So once you can see this region, what we want to do is create a new crease that aligns with this edge here. So as soon as you can create a new crease that aligns with that edge, then do so. So just try to get it as close as possible, just like this. And it looks like you just added a new pleat. Now we're going to do something similar on this top section here. You'll see that there's one, two, three creases, and we're going to start by folding it down along this third crease, or the crease on the bottom. So we're going to create a valley fold by just folding down along that crease. Then we're going to fold it back up by creating a mountain fold along the second crease here, just like that. Then we're going to fold it back down along the last crease, just like this. Then once you've pleated the top section of your model, it should look like this. Then you simply need to rotate the model. Now we're going to fold in these two edges here. So we're going to start with this right edge and we're going to pull it in as far as it'll go. So just pull it into the center of the model like this. And once it reaches this edge here, then it's going to stop and you can make your crease. So just make a sharp crease like that. And then you want to do the same thing on the left. So we're going to pull this left edge in as far as it'll go. So pull it towards the center of the model, just like that. Then once it reaches this edge, it's going to stop and then you can make your crease. Again, make a sharp crease. And then your model should look like this. Now we're going to fold both sides of this top edge here down to align with this center vertical crease here. So let's start with this right side and we're just going to pull it down like this and align this edge with that center vertical crease. So start at the top and work your way down, aligning the edge with the crease. And once the entire edge is aligned, you can make your crease. Then you want to do the same thing with this top left edge. So you're just going to pull it down like this, and again align the edge with the crease. Once the entire edge is aligned, you can make your crease, just like this. And then your model should look like that. Now we're going to fold up these two flaps along this horizontal crease here. So we're going to start with this right side, and we're going to fold this right flap up along this right horizontal crease. So just fold it up like this. It shouldn't be too difficult because you're reinforcing the crease you already created. Then you want to do the same thing on the left. So you're going to fold the left flap up along this left horizontal crease. So just fold it up the same way you did before. And once you've done that to both sides, your model should look like this. Now we're going to pull apart these two layers here just to make the mouth of the jack-o'-lantern a bit wider. So we're going to start with this right side and what we want to do is put a finger down up here just to hold this layer down, and then we're going to pivot the layer out to the right, starting at the bottom. So we're just going to pull it over like this. And there's no exact reference point for this, but the whole goal is to make the mouth a bit wider. 
So what I like to do is make sure that this corner here aligns with the layer underneath it. So as soon as that corner aligns with that edge, then I try to make my crease. And also I look to see if the mouth comes to a nice point in the top right corner. And if it does, then I'll make my crease. And then I want to do the same thing on the left. So what we're going to do is simply put our finger down on this left corner and we're going to pivot the layer out to the left, starting at the bottom, just like this. So pull it over. And then what we want to do is make our crease when this corner aligns with the edge underneath or when this top left corner comes to a nice point. So just make your crease like that. Again, there's no exact reference points, but once you're done, your model should look like this. Now we're going to fold this top corner down by making a crease extending through the two top points of these two vertical creases here. So we're going to start by pulling down this top corner, and as soon as it aligns with both of those vertical creases, then you can make your crease. Crease sharply, because you're creasing through quite a few layers. And then once you've done that, your model should look like this. Now we're going to give the jack-o'-lantern a nose by folding back these two edges here. So we're going to start with this right side, and we want to lift up this flap, and then we want to fold this corner underneath. So what we're going to do is just fold it like this, and again, there's no reference point for this, but you just want to fold it under and create half a triangle, because we want a triangular nose, so you kind of want to fold it like this. So anything like this should be fine. Then you want to do the same thing on the left, and you want to match it up to the right side just to make it look a little bit better, just like this. And once you've done that to both sides, then you've given your jack-o'-lantern a nose. Now we're going to turn the model over. And once it's turned over, then you're going to fold down this top edge here. So you're just going to pull it down like this. And you want to make sure you let the trap layer out from underneath. And there's no exact reference point for how far you have to pull it down. But this part is just going to determine how tall the stem is on your jack-o'-lantern. So you can pull it down as far as you'd like. So once you've pulled it down, then you can make your crease, and then your model should look something like this. Now we're going to fold in these two corners here, just to round off the model a bit. So we're going to start with this right corner, and we're just going to pull it in like this. And now there's no exact reference for this, we just want to give the model a nice pumpkin shape. So once you fold it in the right corner, then you want to do the same thing on the left. So you're just going to pull it in like this. And then once you've done that on both sides, your model should look something like this. Then you can turn the model back over. Now we're going to finish up the model by focusing on the stem. So what we want to do is separate the two layers of the stem just to make it a bit wider. So we're going to start with this right side and we're going to pull the right layer over to the right, just like this. And then we want to do the same thing to the left. So we're going to pull the left layer just like this over to the left. And once you've done that to both sides, and your model looks like this, then your jack-o'-lantern is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to fold an origami jack-o'-lantern designed by Junmei Kawa. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and thank you for watching.